Welcome to this episode of the Keto Vegan Podcast. I'm Rach, I'm your host. In today's episode, I do a day in the life of a keto vegan at a hen do. We went to Brighton for Luke and Kingsley's hen do, stag do, whatever it's called, and just see if I last for the whole thing. I normally go to bed at 7.30, 8 o'clock. I've also changed the music of my podcast, my intro, outro music, because I've changed my editing software, which meant I had to change it. I really hope you like it. If you're watching the podcast on my YouTube channel, you'll see that when I do the very first bit and having breakfast, I have no makeup on. I've not done my hair. I look pretty, I don't know what you'd say. Also, if you're watching, you'll see how glam Luke and Kingsley look. Their girlfriends made them up incredibly. So do have a watch if you've got the time. In this episode, I end on a bit more of a serious note. I found some excellent research on a psychology magazine that talks about how to talk to your children if you think they're overweight. Today is the day of the big hen do, Luke and King's Liz. I haven't completely got ready yet. I've got up and I'm now going to have I'll show you what I'm having for breakfast. So what I've done, I've got lots of salad leaves. I know it's breakfast. It's not even eight o'clock yet. And I've heated up a red Thai curry. This is a really good start to my day. I am going to have another snack before I go. Getting ready to go for the day, I am going to take two bags of the roasted smoky almonds from Sainsbury's. The carbs on that per 100 grams are something like 7.6, if I can remember rightly, of which sugar is 4.4. So I'm going to have one to have with me for the day and then one for breakfast tomorrow. Before I go, I am going to have a lovely, strong, milky coffee, one of the strong pods. And the milk that I use, which is great, zero carbs, is the no sugars almond. Arrived at the first destination. This is the Queen's Head at the top of Brighton. Just station, which you can see over there. I'm sitting here outside with my daughter, Annie. So we are here about midday, there's a few inside. Apparently there's going to be 30 of us all together. Luke and Kingsley are arriving at um, midday, but what I'm having to drink now is a single vodka soda and a squeeze of lime. That's completely keto. I've just had some smoked almonds because I was getting hungry because I didn't have breakfast. I had breakfast about eight o'clock and I guess now, what's the time, Annie? About one o'clock. Yeah, so it's 10 past one. And we're not going to be eating until we get to the next place. They still haven't been told where we're going. Next place, we're gonna do cocktail making and then we'll have something to eat there. And I just knew I would last. We've arrived at Revolution Bar. We're having a cocktail session in tens, teaching us how to do cocktails. And they've set up some pre-drinks. I'm gonna to have to ask what's in those to see if there's loads of sugar in those. Okay, what's happening now? They're gonna teach us how to do cocktails. And I've asked specifically at Revolution Bar if they can do me a sugar-free, so they have sugar-free in soda rather than the sugar syrup in there and the lemonade okay it's getting a little bit messy now people are drinking 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 we had try a cocktail make a cocktail the first one is a um a port star martini the second one's a mojito which would be perfect for me but it's only 10 at a time and i didn't get in quick enough the third one which i was part of was a strawberry daiquiri but it had loads of sugar syrup in they were blending it for five at a time Plus the strawberries, so I asked Sam, the barman over there, so fresh. Yeah. needs a drink. I actually asked him if I could do my own mojito, but the group before had drank all the white rum, so I've had to make my own mojito. So that's squeezes of lime, crushes of mint, lots of ice, some, I did put spiced rum in there and then topped it with soda. So I am still sticking to the keto. Well done, Ray. There's no point in even talking. This is prison. We're here for a drag show. The music's far too loud. No food here. We had a welcoming drink, which was Prosecco with lemonade. What do people do then? Anyway. I guess it's to make it cheaper. So we've got allocated seating, we're right at the back, but we were told that there's no allocated seating. So get here as soon up as seven as you can. So they all went here at seven. Jack and I went back to the room, checked in, back to this room. And now we're here. No food here, just playing. I think I'm going to go into sparkling water or water. If 
might have a drink, might be a vodka soda, might be gin and tonic, don't know. And so it's the end of the evening for me. The rest of the stag do, hen do, are at Prism for a drag show. But my daughter, she really needed to go to bed. She's got a baby that's five months old that's not been sleeping through. So I showed her where we were staying. It's a tiny little door beside a restaurant. And she would have never found it unless I took her. So I took her. And I thought I wouldn't go back to the drag show. I thought I'd find somewhere just to sit and enjoy the view. And so here I am. It's a busy place. It's the Ship Hotel on Brighton Seafront. The pier is over there. There's some people just standing in the way. You can see it there. It's lovely and I'm just chilling, enjoying the evening. It's nearly May and the weather has been choice and the moon is up there, it's lovely. And so that's the end of my a day in the life of a keto vegan at a Hendy. I think other than maybe the choice cocktails, but then I did choose and they were very accommodating. It was Revolution Bar that was the most accommodating. They were really great. Um, and that's where we were for the most of the day. So I would say do it and just make sure you're making the right choices. When the food came out, there was rice with the, um, there was a katsu curry, a vegan choice katsu curry and a vegan burger with chips and coleslaw. And as, well, as always with places that don't really do vegan, the vegan burger came out with chips, bun and coleslaw, but the coleslaw had no mayonnaise on it, it was dry. So I didn't bring mayonnaise with me today. Of course I didn't, I've got a tiny little bag. I'm not gonna spend time doing that. And it's a shame, isn't it? Because Brighton as well, you'd think that um, they were really pro-vegan. There are so many pro-plant-based places here. But obviously, well, it's a shame, but the, clearly the places that are big commercial don't think about those things. I did manage to stay keto. I will test myself tomorrow to see what it's like. I will speak to you next time, but there's a little bit of information that I think you'd be love, you would love to know. I hope you enjoyed all of that. It was a bit noisy in the background, wasn't it? Now, I just want to say that Luke and Kingsley have started their three-week keto vegan diet, which is my wedding gift to them. That was a hell of a lot of prep. And they needed an awful lot of space in their freezer and they saved me one drawer. It filled up a whole freezer. And then also the smoked almonds that I ate, I didn't eat the two packs at all. I ate half a pack when we were in the first pub because I'd had breakfast. I didn't have another snack before I left. I did have a nice milky coffee though. Um, and then I had some smoked almonds in the first pub and then we ate at Revolution Bar. In the morning, every morning, I start with my supplements. More about that next episode. And now I want to talk about this psychology research that I found last week. I'd had a conversation with a friend about his daughter and he was saying that, oh, you know, she's a little bit overweight, etc., etc. And I'm like, be careful what you say. I know from my own experience as a child and I then, this article came up two days later on the Psychology Review magazine, the British Psychological Society. What they are saying, well, the title of the research is Teasing Children About Weight Increases Risk of Self-Stigma as Adults, this study found. The research says that it's found that this teasing, if that's what you can call it, I certainly wouldn't call it teasing. Teasing's meant to be fun, isn't it? And I know that I was teased. Um, by cousins and comments made to me all the time about from my parents about my weight and how I shouldn't eat this and shouldn't eat that. And I am testament to the fact that this has long lasting effects, always feeling that you're overweight, always feeling that you're the fat one, doesn't matter how much weight you lose. And it's a complex issue and it starts in childhood. If you are a parent with a child that's a little bit overweight, carry on listening and find out what the research says. 
if we are commented upon about our weight, the research says that we are at greater risk of feeling bad about our bodies decades later, no matter whether you grow up um, to have obesity or not, or whether you are slim. We, If we are teased, and I hate that word because it's teasing is meant to be fun, isn't it? So if you are bullied or commented upon about your weight, then this has long lasting detrimental effects for decades, if, if not for the rest of your life. And maybe the only way out of this is to have therapy and go to the core or find something solution focused. 13 year olds who felt pressure to shed pounds from family or were stigma to um, weight bullying found it was found that when they were 31 they still had internalized weight stigma now this is according to research by the university of bristol and this research was published a couple of weeks ago so it's april 24 um, in the lancet regional health europe journal the research found strong and long-lasting effects on psychological health which is caused by pressure about losing weight and this pressure doesn't only come from family or friends, it also comes from bullying and the media. This article also says that Obesity UK told a parliamentary inquiry back in 2022 that the impact of body image on physical and mental health, that it's linked to depression and anxiety and psychosocial well-being and it could also lead to the avoidance or a delay in adopting healthier habits and um, is associated with an increased risk of mortality independent of a person's weight. Isn't that interesting and concerning? This research asked 13 year olds about how many comments were made to them about their weight from family, from friends, how much pressure they felt and so on. You can see the actual details in the link below to this article. And 18 years later, the same 4,060 people, this is excellent research, who are now adults were asked to rate their agreement with questions such as, I hate myself because of my weight and I am less attractive than most people because of my weight. So this is a longitudinal study, which is excellent. The researchers found that negative weight related comments from parents and feeling under pressure to lose weight from family and the media had the strongest associations with adults suffering with weight stigma and the connections were robust. So they were significant. They say as well that if these children received these comments from family members, the stigma was deeper and longer lasting, more so than friends bullying um, from the media. The researchers urge parents to be really mindful, really careful when talking to their children about their weight. It doesn't mean not to promote a healthy lifestyle, but don't focus on what they need to lose. Focus on what they need to gain and don't talk about their size. Don't talk about their shape. This can be so harmful. Make it about they having healthy eating habits for their own sake, not for their weight sake that it's for their health, it's for their vitality, it's for their well-being, it's for their energy. It's so they feel good. And never, ever suggest that you need to look a certain way to be good, to be accepted. This is the most awful, damaging thing that we can believe, that we have to be a certain way, we have to look a certain way in order to feel loved, accepted, good, enough. What we need to focus on is none of that external stuff. We have to focus on self-love, self-acceptance. Saying the statement, I am enough, can make so much difference. I hope you found that helpful. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Please hit follow or subscribe and I'll see you next time.